social media as the kind of real cutting edge of technological development and shifts for people. I think what's really important is that we make sure we think about social media not just as a new vehicle to people, but that we really think about the way that it restructures culture and the way that the psychology of how people interact with one another, uh, because that's how we really get a deeper sense. One great example for me is a thing called City Walks in Melbourne, in Australia, uh, where a, a group have uh, mapped out the city of Melbourne according to the Gospel of Mark. And uh, so they would take whole uh, busloads of young people uh, walking around the city, reading the Gospel of Mark at different places in the city. What they're doing is developing a, a kind of narrative literacy within those young people to think about the interaction between the story of the gospel, the story of their culture, and their own personal story. So for example, they'll go into the casino and they'll watch the old people who don't have very much money uh, sticking their uh, five cents in the slot machine and they'll read the story of the widow's might. Uh, and they'll think about temple oppression in Jewish culture. Uh, or they'll, uh, in the casino, they'll, they'll talk about the turning over of the table. Uh, they tell me that um, sometimes security comes and throws them out. And sometimes they get hospitality and get offered drinks. And once they got both at the same time. So that was fun. But uh, one of the things we're looking to do is to turn that into an app that people can use that uses a kind of labyrinth model, you know, the, the, uh, the kind of spiritual experience model of taking people around a path almost as a pilgrimage. Uh, we plan to develop an app that will take people on that sort of walk around the city uh, using GPS technology, uh, almost using, uh, you've done, done geocaching where you've got to find the next G GPS coordinator almost as a game. Uh, when you get there it opens up uh, new content to allow you to read the story of the place you are in the life of the story of the gospel. So that's one example I think of a change that's very different from what it means of my engagement, but it's very exciting because it's very participative and it's really living the story, really embedding your own thinking about life in the culture in which you're part. Yeah. I think that deep, honest, raw community generally happens face to face. Uh, and um, one of the challenges that we have as organisations is that sometimes we think about the world in terms of digital and not digital. But the next generation don't think about that. Uh, university MIT in the States has already started coining the term post-digital. Like we're already past it. It's not the most significant way to describe the world anymore as in digital or not digital. And so actually when it comes to developing real community, uh, which is at the core of the Alchemy project, uh, what we're thinking about is how we use social media, how we use digital tools, just as we would use physical tools, because it's all part of the seamless fabric of our lives. Um, I think the specific point about how do you manage a brand on Facebook uh, is a very particular question, um, and generally uh, the answer is don't promote yourself very much. Do you know, I was thinking about this through. Uh, which is an absolutely spectacular room uh, built by the British Empire. And I think most of our understanding of authority comes from within the empire. It's, let's be honest, it's largely been dominated by British thinking and now it's dominated by American thinking. And in both of those contexts, uh, it's generally empire thinking. We come from within the power structure not from outside. The Bible comes from outside the power structures. It's written on behalf of the minority, on behalf of the oppressed. It comes, the story is escape from oppression in Egypt. It's how do we deal with the pretty small monarchy we had in the first place, being exiled and displaced by other big aggressive empires like Babylon and Persia and Greece and Rome and the story of the Gospels is done under the shadow of Emperor Tiberius. And I love that moment in John's Gospel where 
Jesus is risen from the dead and he's just sitting by the sea of Tiberias frying some fish for his friends because the empire can be as big as you like but it hasn't got the power to keep God down. And I think if we could change the way we think about power so that it becomes something on behalf of those who don't have it rather than about maintaining it for those who do, we would have a much more biblical understanding of authority. I, I really loved that story yesterday where the, the guy was saying that uh, uh, the Bible had empowered him to stand up to his father to stop him beating his mother. I mean, what a powerful, moving story. The Bible gave that guy authority. That's the kind of authority that I think is more biblical and is more appropriate in a postmodern age. Generally, the kind of authority that we've talked about is an authority that comes from empire. And I think the Bible gets up in the face of empire. I think one of the things I would say is uh, I'm not particularly interested in getting excited about technology. I mean, I like technology. I don't, it just is, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there's always been technology, it always changes. The, the thing that I think is important, as far as I'm concerned, is cultural change. How is culture being changed by technology? Uh, what it seems to me will happen, uh, but you know, this is speculation about the future, I could be wrong, but it seems to me that the trends are so overwhelming that there will be a tipping point in globalised culture where enough people, it will generally be people who are uh, middle income or higher, will have the access to the internet that's needed to give them uh, a much broader experience, the alchemy of different cultures coming together. That will be sufficient to tip culture in a place and that will have a knock-on effect amongst the poorer members of society who don't have the technology. That's one thought. A second thought is, uh, that, that's the like really generally, generalizing thought that we just paint everything with the same brush. Uh, the second thought is, let's be much more nuanced and recognize that even amongst all those who have technology, there'll be a whole load of different types of cultures that emerge, just as there will be amongst those who don't have the technology. And so this isn't about finding a one-size-fits-all model of scripture engagement just get it and just roll it out everywhere. It's not going to work like that. We actually need deeper, more embedded communities to be able to figure out how to move forward. Uh, so I think two of those things will happen at the same time. Um, one uh, quick reflection. Um, th those of you in uh, translation uh, will uh, know of uh, Mikhail Bakhtin, the Russian linguist, who has an idea about uh, a hybrid speech. The idea that two cultural ideas can be expressed in the same speech. And there's some interesting uh, post colonial uh, theory by a guy called Homi Baba, who, uh, who's from India originally, uh, that that hybrid is unstable, uh, it's always changing. And I think um, that's an interesting idea for us to think about as we think about the future of cultural development globally. As this alchemy continues to happen, it will create hybrid cultural expressions, but they won't be stable. They'll constantly be slipping, moving, changing. Uh, and uh, I think uh, developing a much more nuanced and sensitive understanding of that will be important. We had an interesting conversation yesterday, and um, one of the things that came out very strongly for me that conversation was um, this sense that actually the reality is it's the church that's the wrapper of the Bible. Uh, it's not um, whether you put it in digital format or print. I mean that matters. That only matters to some degree. What really matters is the much bigger wrapper around the Bible, which is the church. And um, I know uh, in the UK one of the big reasons that my friends have left the church was because the church wasn't it just wasn't able to cope with them anymore. It wasn't able to take on this paradigm of participation. 
It just wasn't able to do it. It still isn't, largely. I go to a church and it doesn't want to do it, uh, and I stick it out, but it's tough, because if you, I mean, I'm a very postmodern person, as you probably can tell. I, I, this is the kind of way I want to express my own faith, and, uh, and it becomes very hard, and it's very hard for a generation uh, much younger than me who are really finding themselves in the new world. So I think the biggest thing the church can do is open itself up to change, uh, and a lot of that, again, is about power, it's about allowing people to do things differently. Um, I, one of the phrases we use a lot with the Alchemy Project is this sense of something being experimental. We're creating experimental communities of practice, and I think the church doing experiments is a good way to tackle the problem, because you don't have to just, you know, dismantle the whole thing before you can do something else. Just try some stuff. Like, try some stuff. Some of it will, you know, be a monument of failure, and, uh, the guy who came to Google always said, um, I expect you to fail, just fail quickly, fail well. And what that means is don't drag it out, it's not working, and make sure you capture all your learnings. And if you can do that, uh, you can progress, you can progress iteratively in a meaningful way. I think if the church took on that approach, uh, we could get ourselves out of this hole. I think, sadly, we're out of time, it's 12.30. Uh, thank you so much for your participation, thank you for your questions. Yeah, it's great. It's very good to be here. I've never been to a forum of Bible Agencies International meeting before. It's um, it's a bit like a Bible Agency uh, club, um, but there's some really amazing people doing some really fascinating, quite spectacular things. And it's a place where the right conversations are happening. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased to be here.